Finally, the saga is coming to an end. The third and final episode of my Garden to Table Dandelion series. Um, so this is not actually going to be a video as much as pictures of things and me talking. And I'm not going to walk you through these recipes because these are things that I actually made and ate and didn't think to film, uh, but I found them to be fairly successful recipes and I hope you like them. Now I'm trying to do something a little bit different here in my video than other YouTubers that have also done dandelion videos. I do recommend that you go and check out Emmy Made in Japan. She's done fried dandelions. She's done a poor man's hunting dandelion jelly. She's done how to make dandelion wine. She even did a Confederate Army dandelion coffee, which is sort of similar to the tea that I did in the last episode. But um, those are some really good ones. And if you want to check out a real sweetheart, go to Great Depression Cooking with Clara. Uh, she has lovely stories of her life growing up in the Great Depression, harvesting dandelions. So I've checked out her book. I've bought that. And also I love her YouTube. She has sadly passed away, but her grandson is keeping up the YouTube channel. I really recommend checking that out and also finding her cookbook because it's filled with all sorts of cute stories that you just don't see anywhere else. I think I'll go from the bottom up. So we're going to start with the roots of the dandelion. As I said before, I've already made a tea with a dandelion root, and that's the most common use for the root. But if you've got some nice thick ones, you can actually roast them like a roast vegetable. First thing you're going to have to do is clean and peel some dandelion roots. You're going to need these to be really large roots, because once you get that thick skin off of the dandelion root and get that tender middle, there's not much left. So these are going to be for your really big dandelions. You're going to French cut all the other roasting roots that you're going to mix in with these. So turnips, parsnips, beets, yams, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, carrots, uh, radish. You could even use broccoli stems if you wanted to, but the trick is you've got to shoelace or fry cut them. That's what a French cut is so that they're about the same size lengthwise and diameter wise as your dandelion roots. And if that means that you end up having to dice things somewhat fine, then go ahead and do that. You just want to make sure that you don't end up with large chunks because it's got a bitter flavor, more so than turnips or some of the other uh, vegetables that we usually roast. So by having them cut finer and then mixed in with the others, uh, it makes it so that that dandelion bitterness doesn't suddenly punch you in the face. You can also put in a bit of onion. I like onions and garlic in there. Uh, it's all to your taste. You're going to toss the veggies with some oil, salt, pepper, whatever roasting seasoning you like. I happen to like thyme and rosemary. Other people like to have oregano. You can really use whatever different spices you like to flavor a roast. You can do that on these vegetables. Once everything is coated, you can either shake it in a Ziploc bag or you can uh, put it into a bowl and stir it around. You lay it on the roasting dish, you cover it and you roast it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes, take off the cover, stir it around a bit, another 15 minutes, occasionally peeking in on it, make sure it's not too brown and ta-da, mixed roasted roots. And you can have about a third of it being dandelions before that bitter flavor kind of starts to overwhelm. If you find that happening, squeeze a little bit of uh, lemon on top of your roasted vegetables, and then you've got the sour and the salt which combats with that bitterness, and that will help alleviate that bitter flavor from the dandelion roots. And that's it for the roots. Um, there's nothing else other than roasting it to mix in with vegetables or roasting it and dehydrating it and turning it into a tea or coffee. So now we can move on to the leaves. I'm going to go from easiest to most work involved with this. Uh, and the easiest, of course, is just a salad, keeping the greens just as they are, clean them, cut them, toss them with a vinaigrette dressing, salt and pepper to taste and serve. You need that acidity and a little bit of salt to break down that bitterness flavor. You can use sugar a little bit. Uh, so like a deli honey mustard style dressing would be good. So clean and cut your dandelion greens, thinly sliced red onion, hard boiled egg, smoked ham or turkey, 
bit of tomato, you blend olive oil, wine vinegar, honey, mustard, a little bit of horseradish maybe, salt and pepper to taste, toss it together, serve. You've got your deli honey mustard salad. If you want to do something that's more sort of Southeast Asian, which is what I did when I made my spring rolls. I just cleaned and cut the dandelion greens, chopped up uh, some green onions, bell pepper, avocado, cucumber. I think I put cilantro in that too. And then for the sauce to go with that, just juice of a lime, a bit of Thai basil, some sesame oil, sweet chili sauce, soy sauce, put that in the blender, toss that with the dandelion greens, and then I laid that into my spring rolls. And those turned out really well. You could also put in a bit of rice with them or maybe some cooked shrimp or other fish. That would all help those uh, rolls. But if you just want to do a quick veggie roll, that avocado and cucumber really does fill this out nicely with a good texture. Now dandelion greens hold up really well to cooking. So I'm going to talk about a quiche as well as a casserole and they're very similar however the quiche has more egg in it and a lower crust and the casserole is more of a layered thing going on with a crumble crust on top of croutons or breadcrumbs. At our 4th of July shindig I brought out the cheddar dandelion green uh, casserole and it was very popular. I got asked a lot for the recipe so I'm gonna definitely have that in here but really the quiche is a lot easier to do particularly if you just buy a carton of pre-scrambled eggs like you do or a pre-made crust like I do so for the dandelion quiche you're gonna need one pie crust for the bottom uh, you're going to need four cups of clean finely cut dandelion greens you really need these to be uh, chopped up super fine because when you slice into this quiche you want to not have green stringies that don't like to slice. You're going to want to have some red bell pepper for a little bit of color, some scallions or leeks because you want that sort of onion flavor without too much power on it. You can also use onion powder or garlic powder if you wanted to. I sometimes might toss in some smoked turkey if you're a you know diced ham person. You can do that, but again, keep the slices small because you want the slices of the quiche pie to come out easily. You're going to need one cup of a shredded cheese of your choice. Um, it could be cheddar, but it doesn't have to be. It could be any kind of cheese that shreds well. Um, I know that uh, provolone works well, mozzarella works well, uh, pepper jack. Oh my goodness, pepper jack. Just skip the red bell pepper, go straight to pepper jack. Or, you know, double pepper it. I'm not going to judge. So all those shreddable cheeses, they'd be good. And then you're going to want a soft cheese like a ricotta or a strange cottage cheese. About one cup of that too. And then two cups of beaten eggs. That's eight to 12 eggs, depending on your egg size or about a one pint carton of egg whites and then salt and pepper to taste. You're going to Lay your greens, veggies, cheese spread, shreds and all that in the bottom of your pie crust. You're going to mix the soft cheeses and the egg together and you're going to pour over the top of the greens. The greens are going to kind of float around in that mixture. You might stir it a little bit with a fork or a spoon before you pop it in, but cover the edges of the crust with foil and then bake at 375 for about 30 maybe 40 minutes just until the center is set. You don't want it to be all liquidy. It just needs to barely set and then you cool it for 30 minutes before trying to slice. Because this has egg in it, you could always just toss it in the refrigerator after you've brought it down in temperature a bit. Uh, might get some cracks on the top. That's okay. It's a quiche, not like an amazing, for some reason, dandelion cheesecake. Um, that's giving me weird ideas. The cheddar casserole uses a lot of the same ingredients, only you're not having to worry about a pie crust and you're not putting eggs into it either. So you're gonna need two cups of a pasta or diced potatoes cooked. Um, you can use box macaroni for this. That's a great choice because it comes with that powdered cheddar. So you can make a quick cheddar sauce. Those things, super cheap. I think it's like 37 cents for a box of macaroni and cheese. So that's definitely a good choice. Uh, diced potatoes cooked, 
you know, just boil up your potatoes and dice them or cut them smaller before you boil them and do that. You could also do roasted potatoes or roasted vegetables. Oh, like those roasted dandelion roots, getting more of that dandelion flavor into your casserole. Uh, about a half cup of diced hot dog or ham or canned chicken or some other kind of cooked meat. It needs to be cooked because we're really just assembling and then melting the cheese. A uh, half cup of finely diced onions, bell peppers, and other veggies. A uh, one cup of a cheese sauce. So again, if you use that macaroni and cheese box, uh, make up the sauce as they would have you with whatever uh, margarine or butter and a little bit of milk or cream or whatever. You can make it from scratch. Uh, a bechamel sauce uh, could be used in this, uh, but we're really wanting that cheddar flavor. So yeah, that's going to be interesting if you choose to do that. You could always do just melted Velveeta. One cup of melted Velveeta. Totally legit choice. That's what I did for 4th of July. Uh, one cup of shredded cheddar cheese and one cup of croutons or fried onions or seasoned breadcrumbs. I... I had um, some bread crust that I chopped into sort of crouton looking long things, but that wasn't enough. And so I tossed in a little bit of fried onions, but that wasn't enough. Um, so I took a slice of bread and I crumbled it. And then I tossed in uh, a little bit of olive oil and salt and seasonings. And um, yeah, so I had all of those things, croutons, Fried onions, seasoned breads, everything was in the topping of mine. And it still turned out. So the process is, after you've cooked the potatoes or pasta al dente, so it's not quite to mush, you're, you're going to want to have them still with a little bit of structure because we're heating this up again. You're going to saute the veggies mix and a little bit of oil until the onions are clear, and then add in whatever meat you have until that's heated through. And then you mix in the cheese sauce with the meat and veggies. So if you've got the powder and you're doing that, you can just sprinkle the powder on, add in the liquids that you need to, and take it off the heat. If you're just melting some Velveeta, just chop up your Velveeta, drop it in a little bit at a time, melt it all. Once it's melted, take it off the heat. If you're making something from scratch, good luck to you. You obviously know what you're doing. Soldier on. Then what you're going to do is you're going to layer the starch, the dandelion greens, and the shredded cheddar. So layer on the bottom, thin layer of noodles or potatoes. Then you put on your chopped up dandelion greens, then shredded cheddar sprinkled over that, then cheese sauce. And then do again, a little layer of starch, layer of dandelions, you know, shredded cheddar, cheese sauce, starch, dandelions, cheddar, cheese sauce until you have used up all of your ingredients and now on the very top you put on your croutons and crumbs fried onions whatever you have and then bake at a low temperature until all the cheddar shreds are melted i find my lowest setting which is just warm at about 180 degrees fahrenheit isn't enough to get the cheddar in the middle melted particularly when i'm doing stuff like nachos and things like that so I find that I have to crank it up to about 200 to 225, but we're really not cooking this as much as just getting everything to melt together. Now I found out that sweet potatoes and dandelion greens go really well together, totally by accident. I'd made up some sweet potatoes and I had a dandelion salad and I uh, accidentally dumped my sweet potatoes steaming hot on top of my dandelion greens and amazingly the steamed dandelion greens tasted really good with the sweet potato so now it's actually a thing that i do on purpose two sweet potatoes or yams one onion two tablespoons of oil and um, i'm gonna say a pound of dandelion greens cleaned and cut that could be just a couple really big dandelions or dozens of small ones. So whatever level your dandelion greens are at, try to have a good amount of them for this recipe. You're going to cube and cook your sweet potatoes. I don't care if you roast them. I don't care if you boil them. I don't care 
how you make your sweet potatoes. You could even like do this with mashed sweet potatoes if you wanted to. Dice an onion, saute it with oil on medium until it's translucent. Add the cooked sweet potatoes and a little bit of water and salt and pepper to taste. Let the water cook off and allow the browning to happen on the sweet potatoes. And then you remove those from the heat in a separate bowl. And then in that very same pan, a little bit of water again, and then you're gonna steam the dandelions in batches. So you take about half of them, put the lid over the top, let them steam no more than two minutes, pull them out, remove those hot greens, and stir them in with sweet potatoes. If you've got mashed sweet potatoes, just toss them in with those mashed potatoes and stir them all around. If you've still got like the cubes or diced sweet potatoes, that's fine too. Again, salt and pepper to taste, maybe a little squeeze of lemon if you want to, and serve it warm. Now we go up from the leaves to the top, which is of course the blossoms. Now you can always add dandelion petals to uh, anything that you're making that you want to have a little garnish of bright yellow to. Uh, they're an edible petal, an edible flower. Uh, if you look at Emmy Made in Japan's uh, YouTube, she's got fried onion blossoms. If that's something that you want to try out, go and check hers out. But I pretty much always turn mine either into dehydrated petals to make into a tea or dehydrated petals that then get made into a syrup, which I then can use to sweetly flavor things with a dandelion infusion. So if you want to make dandelion wine or dandelion honey or dandelion cocktails, you're going to need to start with the dandelion syrup. I made that in my last video. Pretty simply, it's heat up water with the dandelion blossoms in it. Dissolve sugar in, two parts sugar to one part of the water. Make sure you strain out all the dandelion solids so you don't have little floaties in your syrup. And then put it in a jar. Stick it in the back of your fridge. You can keep it at room temperature in a sealed jar for a few months, but not too terribly long. And that's the simple syrup. And something else that simple syrup is good for is cocktails. So here's what you can do when it comes to lemonade, limeade, and cocktails. Just to make regular lemon or limeade is going to be one cup lemon or lime juice and one cup of the dandelion syrup and about six cups water in a large pitcher. If that's a little bit too intense a flavor, just dilute it with some ice or add in some extra water. You're gonna garnish with dandelion petals if you want to, and that's it for lemonade limeade. Now, let's say you wanna make a cocktail like a dandelion gimlet or sour. So you're gonna shake with ice equal parts of lime juice if you're making a gimlet, or lemon juice if you're making a sour, and the dandelion syrup, plus a two ounce shot of vodka and one egg white. That egg white, when you shake it, is gonna make a foam that when you strain it into the rocks glass that you're gonna serve it out of, will have a nice little fluffy foam at the top. You're gonna garnish that with a dandelion blossom or dandelion petals and a cherry, and boom, there's your gimlet or your sour. You wanna have a gin fizz? I will say gin works really well with the dandelions because gin already has sort of herbal floral notes depending on the type of gin that you get. So again, in a shaker with ice, equal parts the juice of a lemon, the dandelion syrup, two ounces of gin. That's it. You shake it. You pour it into a tall glass with the ice and then you top with soda water and there you have a dandelion gin fizz. Last of all, I mean, it's summertime, so of course, margarita time. Daniel Lion Margarita, you're gonna rub the glass rim with a lime, press it into salt so you got your salt rim. And then in your shaker with ice, equal parts of the lime juice and dandelion syrup, plus a little splash of orange liqueur. It could be triple sec or whatever your favorite orange liqueur is, and a two ounce shot of tequila. Strain it into a glass, maybe put it over ice, and there's your dandelion margarita. You don't want to add 
bitters to any of these because that will detract from the dandelion flavor, which already imparts a slight bitterness. So if you were going to make uh, anything like a, a whiskey sour or something like that that uses that little splash of bitters, just skip it because the dandelions do that for you already. And you say, hey, I came here to eat the weeds, not drink the weeds. Tell me something new. How about dandelion scones with a dandelion glaze? So you're going to want to have two cups of baking mix. It could be homemade, bisquick, crusties, etc. You're going to need a half cup of butter, cold and cubed, and you're going to need a half cup of dandelion syrup. So you're going to cut the butter thoroughly into the baking mix. And then you're going to slowly add in the dandelion syrup and mix until a ball forms. You're going to knead that ball three to four times and then cut it into wedges. And bake it at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 to 15 minutes. I like it more at the 12 end. Uh, some people like theirs uh, with a dark brown. I like mine very pale. So... You take those out of the oven and you cool them completely before you start glazing. For the glaze, you're going to need two cups of confectioner's sugar, a quarter cup of the dandelion syrup, and maybe some dehydrated dandelion petals as sprinkles. You're going to slowly sift the sugar into the warmed syrup. You want the syrup a little bit warm, but not too terribly hot. It could be room temperature. I like mine a little bit warmer than that, but if you put it into the microwave, put it in 15 seconds at most. Check it, five seconds. Don't put it in there for a full minute because you will have boiling, burning syrup all over the inside of your microwave. Not good. So warm syrup, slowly sift in the sugar until the desired glaze texture is reached. The more confectioner's sugar you put in, the stiffer the glaze will be. So if you want to have something that sort of piping drizzles, you're going to put a lot of the confectioner's sugar in there. If you want something that's more just a thin shell that you maybe dip your scones in and just let it run off, then you're going to put in less confectioner's sugar. Confectioner's sugar doesn't just have sugar, it also has a little bit of cornstarch in it, and that's what's going to make that shelling of the glaze, that a little bit of crust that the glaze gets, that's part of it. So pour your glaze over the cooled scones and immediately put on your sprinkles. If you've got petals, great. If you're using yellow sugar, fine. But you put that on as soon as you have the glaze on there. And then you let them sit five minutes. And that five minutes will make sure that the glaze is not runny or sticky or gooey and it will have set on your scones. And that's dandelion scones with a dandelion glaze. I think it's about time that we finish up uh, this dandelion filming with some folklore, folk medicine, and actual nutritional value of dandelions. Dandelions have a strong association in folklore with magic, wishes, and fairies. I mean, you may have heard the thing that if you blow on one of these puff balls and one of those seeds floats off somewhere and plants itself in the ground and grows into a new dandelion, your wish will be granted. Well, that's basically a sure deal because uh, these are seed making machines and dandelions are so adaptable that they will work in almost any soil condition, you know, even if it's not ideal. So I, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't put much stock in that. It's also been used as a uh, divination tool for predicting the future. For example, in some cultures, if you blow on one of these puff balls and you can't get every single seed off of it, you might be pregnant. Hmm. I wouldn't say that that's a real scientific test, so don't, don't use dandelion puff balls as a pregnancy test. Just saying. Dandelions have been called fairy clocks because when they are hit by the sunlight in the morning, they open and then in the evening they close. They're very regular about that. And even somewhat like a sunflower, 
they will slightly track the sun as it moves through the sky. Not quite as much as a sunflower, but they are in the sunflower family. The Geo Solo, Geo Sol, yeah, they're in that family, along with sunflowers, daisies, and Jerusalem artichokes. Dandelions are considered a masculine flower, and in Victorian times, they were considered a flower of love, but not like romantic love, more like bro love, a manly kind of love, a love between compatriots. It has a wide list of other associations from various cultures, and I had to write them down. Practicality, wishes, love, war, persistence, bitterness, gentleness, grief, welcome, fate, faithfulness, and stubbornness. It's also been associated with the elements of fire and air, the sun, Jupiter, and Saturn. So, yeah. There's a lot of symbolism with these flowers. Now, in ancient China, they were the first to put in writing that dandelions were being used to purify the blood and also enhance the immune system. It was like the echinacea of the day. I don't know exactly if it was eating the whole plant, tea from the root, tea from the petals, or a combination of everything, but uh, yeah. That was interesting. In the first and second centuries in Scandinavia, it was reported that the sap from a dandelion could be used to treat burns, cuts, scratches, and other small wounds to keep down inflammation in 11th century Arabic countries. Tea from dandelions was being used to improve liver and kidney function. And in Renaissance Italy, Blossoms from dandelions were used to treat symptoms of asthma and allergies. Okay, that's interesting folk medicine historical stuff. Dandelions contain many different vitamins, such as vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K, which I didn't even know was a vitamin until I looked up what the nutritional value of dandelions was. It also contains a variety of vitamin B complexes. They also contain folate, potassium, magnesium, iron, and calcium, which makes sense because they've got those deep roots that punch into the soil. They're bringing up all of those minerals into their leaves and into their blossoms. So that's all really good. The roots contain soluble carbohydrates, and those are connected to good digestive health. So if you eat the roasted roots, as well as making teas out of the roots, you're ingesting those soluble fibers, which means you're doing something that's good for your belly. The blossoms contain the antioxidants of beta carotene, which is what makes carrots orange, as well as polyphenols. That is really good for anyone who's trying to increase the number of antioxidants that they're eating in a day. Modern science is studying whether some of those ancient uses for dandelions are actually applicable now. So that's all the information that I have on dandelions. You can look up more online. Just be sure that when you see something may be connected to, that doesn't mean that it actually is. So take everything uh, with a little grain of salt. I hope you've enjoyed these series of videos. I hope that you have put dandelions on your menu. Be safe, and have fun. <sighs> I got some dandelion blood on me. <laughs> If this lapel mic doesn't work this time, I'm just gonna lip sync over the top. And seeing that I don't actually have a script, it's gonna look like a bad dub. Dandelions have a lot of folklore associations. For, can the semi-truck stop driving by?
Oh, that's not a semi. It's just somebody with a really loud regular truck. <clears throat> but where's the real science? Back to the notes. I wish those trucks would stop going by. A variety of vitamin B complexes. A variety of a variety of vitamin Bs. They all the blossoms contain <sighs> eh, that's an interesting thing. 